What's up guys, it's Adam from Adam's Trail Notes and today I'm going to be discussing my new freebie and it is the ultimate night photography checklist. Now this checklist will help you with anything related to night photography, especially if you are starting out or a beginner because I know it can be very overwhelming, especially because you are trying to learn photography when it is completely dark out and it can be scary, there's weird noises, it can be cold out, uh, stuff can break down, but trust me, it is a lot of fun to do and you can get some really cool results with it, shooting the stars, the Milky Way, star trails, the moon, so much stuff is possible with night photography. So with this free checklist that you can download right below, down in the link, I'm gonna show you how to use it effectively and how it can help you take amazing night images. Let's get into it. All right, so we have the ultimate night photography checklist open. So first we're gonna go to the when and where to go because of course you need to know when and where to go. It's very important that you plan a lot of these shots out. So first off, if you wanna go somewhere to shoot night photography, you need it to be very dark out and that is the first thing you need to check off is make sure you're going during a new moon or around a new moon. And a new moon is basically when the moon is just not showing during the night. Uh, if you've ever looked up at the moon, you've probably seen it during different phases when it's a tiny crescent to a whole full moon. Now, you want a new moon because the moon emits light and you wanna go where it's completely dark out. So you don't want a moon. So, new moon, first step. Next step is no clouds because, actually you can't see behind me, but right now it's kinda cloudy out. Um, but you wanna go somewhere where there are no clouds. You want to check the weather beforehand because clouds ruin your star shots because with clouds you cannot see your stars, which is sad. So check the weather. You want to go when there's no clouds out. And the third one is you want to go where there's no light pollution. And light pollution is just artificial light that can seep into your images. It happens uh, from different cities. Like of New York, uh, you can barely even see the moon there. But if you go out somewhere like Nebraska or uh, Ohio, out in the middle of the desert maybe, you uh, it's gonna be completely dark out. So you wanna go somewhere like that. There are some resources to help out with that, and especially state parks and national parks are usually pretty dark. They keep out the light pollution as much as possible. And they're pretty far away from any civilization with light. So go where there's no light pollution or little light pollution. All right, next is what to pack. So of course, if you're taking pictures, you're gonna want a camera. Don't forget the camera. It would, it would suck to forget the camera. Next, you want a wide-angle lens, and a wide-angle lens is especially perfect for beginners because since it is so dark out, it is really hard to find a composition correctly or efficiently. So with a wide-angle lens, you can kind of just point your camera anywhere, and you're going to capture a lot of the foreground and a lot of the sky, and it's perfect just starting out, so you won't get too frustrated with where your pictures are or how they're coming out. So wide-angle lens is best. I recommend between a 15 and 30 millimeter or 15 to 24 millimeter. That'll probably be best when starting out. And the next one is you want a sturdy tripod. Now this is one of the most important things besides a camera that allows you to take pictures is a sturdy tripod. Because when you are shooting at night, you are shooting long exposures, which means about 20 to 30 seconds. And that means that you cannot bump your camera at all or everything will just shift and be like a blur. You want a sturdy tripod because it will keep your camera secure. And not just any tripod, a sturdy tripod. And if you want to weigh your camera down even more, you can attach a backpack or a bag of rocks or any weight down on the center column, attach a hook there, and that'll keep your tripod very secure and kind of weighted down to the ground so your camera will not move at night. The next one is this. It's a headlamp or a flashlight. I prefer both just because they both come in very handy for different reasons. But a headlamp especially because you want to be able to see your camera in the back of your screen and make sure you're not going to trip over anything, especially like your tripod or your equipment. You don't want that to happen, it's embarrassing and it, you know, it sucks. A headlamp or flashlight so you can see in the dark because it's going to be pitch black out. Next up is an intervalometer. Intervalometer is basically just like an external shutter remote. It connects to your camera and then you can take a picture without having to touch your camera. And again, this is good because you don't want to touch your camera at all when you're taking a picture because that'll minimize the shake a lot because you want crisp, sharp stars. So get yourself an intervalometer, they're like $20. Just make sure you get the right make and model and you will be fantastic. And the next section is to be prepared because night photography is not just like any type of photography. You are shooting at night and there's a lot of variables that can go wrong easily because you don't prepare. Because it's dark out, a lot of stuff changes. So the first one and the most important tip I can ever give you is scout the location during the day because you do not want to get lost at night. It sucks, it feels very scary, 
and you just don't want to do that. You don't want to get lost anywhere, but especially at night. So, especially if you're going to a new area, make sure to arrive before sunset and hike where you're going to hike in the night. So like, hike, make sure you know where the trailhead is, if there's any markers on the trail, because you want to get familiar with the area. Because if you've ever been anywhere at night, you know that it, first of all, looks different, but it also feels very different. And I've seen plenty of examples where people will hike somewhere they've never been before in the night in like a two mile hike and it's just like they're shining their flashlights everywhere they get lost constantly it's just not fun so make sure you know where the location is and what the location looks like during the day and hopefully try and go there before it gets dark out so you have a good understanding of what to expect there and next up is to bring extra batteries now, you want to always be prepared and always bring extra batteries, but especially during night photography because usually when you're shooting at night, it gets colder out and the battery life decreases. So, for anything that requires batteries, I'm talking cameras, intervalometers, flashlights, uh, even the phone, just bring extra batteries, portable chargers, anything you can think of so you're prepared and you have batteries so you can shoot all night long. And the next part is to bring a friend. Yeah, okay. all right. So, you can bring a friend, a buddy, or a girlfriend, family member, Whatever you want, just someone to explore and shoot the night sky with, or enjoy the night sky. We're out here trying to shoot a meteor shower, but it's kind of cloudy right now. But uh, besides, you know, looking at stars with someone, it's also very uh, less scary out, right? Because like, going anywhere alone is scary, but especially at night. Yeah. And if you get lost, your friend, family member, acquaintance, whatever you want to bring, is right there. If you uh, run into trouble, if you find a scary animal like a donkey at night, they're there to help you get through it. So bring a friend if you can, uh, it's a lot of fun and they can pose for some cool night photos. Or you can force them to. So either way, alright, thank you, that's it. The last part for this checklist is what settings to use because of course you can bring all the equipment, you can be so prepared, but if you don't know how to shoot night photography, you don't know how to photograph the stars, you're not really going to get anywhere and it's going to be very frustrating, a lot of time lost. So I have on this cheat sheet actually a little table graph that shows you what shutter speed, aperture, and ISO you need or the settings recommended for Milky Way and or Star Trails photography because if you've ever heard those terms before they look a lot different they require some different settings so I give you all of those and for other camera settings you want your camera mode and that's a little mode dial up top you want it in manual mode because that means you can change all of your settings and you want that because during night photography when it's really dark out you need to be able to control all of your settings next up you want to manually focus because at night, if you try an autofocus, it is dark out and the stars are far away, the autofocus will just hunt and hunt and hunt, and it will never focus on them. So, you want a manual focus, so that just means that you can turn the lens dial yourself so you can focus on the stars, and I explain that in a lot of different videos. But basically, you zoom in on a really bright star on your screen and just make it a very, very small little point, and that means you are focused. And as you practice this more, you get very fast at it and it becomes really easy. And the last and final part is to shoot in RAW mode. And if you've ever heard of RAW or JPEG mode, RAW mode is great because it gives you so much flexibility, which is great for editing because then you have more information from the picture so you can pull out more stuff in editing, which is always so nice. So if any of that sounded of interest to you or helpful, and of course you can just, you know, have it on your phone just like I do, and you can just go through every night, every time you're uh, planning a night photography trip or out shooting, you can just check it off and make sure you're doing it well because you drive out here, you are in the dark, you're in the cold, you want to take good photos. So make sure you're prepared, download this night photography checklist right down below, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you later.